Today we're going to be comparing the New Balance Fuel Cell Propels to the Hoka Oni Oni Rincons. Since I bought both these pairs of shoes, I've wanted to make a comparison video because on the outside, on the surface, they look very similar. They seem very similar to specs on websites and things. However, they work very, very differently. I've found uses for both in different ways. And today, I'm gonna to be going through the differences between these two shoes, how I've been using them personally, and how you guys can get the most out of them. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, please make sure you hit that like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And without further ado, let's dive in. Okay guys, so let's start with similarities. The New Balance Fuel Cell Propel pricing wise comes in at $99.99, whereas the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon is $104.99. That's five pounds difference. So in terms of pricing, they're very much on a par. And I would say that from my perspective, having used them both quite a bit now, that they are absolutely value for money. Both of these shoes have been marketed for light, fast and nimble type of running. That's the type of shoe that you're gonna get and I can agree with their marketing. That's exactly how I found them. However, there are some differences and we'll come to that later in the video. In terms of other similarities, we have a heel to toe drop in the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel of six millimeters and in the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon we have five millimeters. Again, very similar there. If we look at the actual shoe designs themselves, they both utilize uh, breathable mesh uppers, which is fantastic to keep things lightweight. And from a non-technical perspective, the whole ankle area uh, with the lacing and the lockdown is absolutely perfect. I've had no issues in either shoes. The only thing I experienced at all was in the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel. The first couple of times I was walking around in the shoe, not when I was running, but just walking. I was getting a bit of ankle rubbing just here on the outside of the ankle, but after a while that seemed to go. So other than that, I get a really nice lockdown a really great feel in both of these shoes. You'll notice the, the main difference here is the Fuel Cell Propel has a big heel flare and the, the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon does not. Again, it doesn't make any difference for me. I don't notice the heel flare in this and I don't notice that I don't have one in this. Moving down the shoe, again, the only difference between the two is the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel has a suede tip on the end, I'm guessing, just to protect your toes a little bit for durability uh, and we'll come on to durability very shortly and both shoes have a uh, very similar stack height kind of EVA um, uh, midsole foam in there. Both super, super cushioned, both really, really comfortable rides. The main difference between the two shoes, and this is where we come to, is the weight. The Hoka Ona Ona Rincon is 218 grams, the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel is 260 grams. And I would think, this is just my opinion, I would think that that difference is gonna be made up of two things. The material in this feels a little bit heavier and thicker than the Hoka Ona Ona Rincon. And of course, the main difference with these two shoes is the outsole rubber. As you can see here on the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel, the outsole rubber covers the majority of the outsole of the shoe, and that they say is because they want to provide durability uh, and um, you know make it longer uh, make it a longer lasting shoe. Whereas as you can see over here on the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon, we have a lot of mid midsole foam exposed and just some outsole rubber in the high wear areas that they state is gonna get the most impact. And I think that's where the big weight difference comes from is in terms of um, uh, the outsole rubber and the types of material, the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon certainly wins in terms of weight. However, that comes down to durability. This thing is wearing a heck of a lot quicker than this thing. So you've got to weigh up then whether you want to spend uh, the money on having something that's a touch more expensive. I mean, let's be honest, 260 grams is pretty light as it is. 
but something that's a little bit cheaper, but it's a bit weightier, but it's gonna last you longer, as opposed to something that's just a touch more expensive, isn't gonna last you as long, but feels a lot lighter on your feet. So that, guys, in terms of similarities, is where these two stand. So during my short time that I've had with both these shoes, I've experimented in different workouts in the Propel and of course the Rincon, trying to fathom out how I would like to use these shoes moving forward, what feels best in these shoes, and I have come up uh, with what I'm gonna be using these shoes for moving forward. In fact, this last week, I've been using them exactly how I've wanted, and it feels absolutely incredible. These two shoes combined, for me personally, are an absolute winner. This thing I am now starting to lean towards more easy days. The cushioning and comfort in this shoe is absolutely phenomenal and it just feels so good. And so in terms of the difference between the two, if you're looking for a softer, more comfortable shoe, this is the shoe that's going to give you that little bit more comfort. Whereas this one, I'm not taking any way, anything away from the comfort. Again, the comfort in this thing is fantastic, but it's a little bit more snappy and a little bit more responsive, which is lending itself to more of the faster type of workouts. So in terms of the ways that I'm using them, as I said, this thing is getting used for some of the easy days and then some of the longer interval efforts. If I've got some longer workouts, I have used this in, in one of those efforts and I really, really enjoyed that. I'm also using the Nike Zoom, uh, Nike Zoom Fly 3 for some of the longer workouts as well. So that's where I'm using this thing, easy days and longer workouts. And the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon is certainly where I'm putting the speed into it. This thing is an absolute gem when it comes to uh, shorter, sharper workouts, interval work, tempo work. My 20 minute tempo run I did the other night felt an absolute breeze in this shoe. So much so that I am contemplating running the Swindon Half Marathon in this shoe. This shoe for me is a real racing shoe. Whether it's designed in that with that in mind, I have no idea because I haven't looked at their marketing. All I know is kind of a, a lighter, shorter, snappier type of shoe. But for me, this thing feels absolutely great. And the one positive I've really found with the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon, and I've heard from a lot of people, is Hoka shoes can be quite narrow. I have quite wide feet. This thing fits really well. So if you have wide feet, I'm pretty confident you're not going to have an issue with this shoe unless they're ridiculously wide, then you might. Um, so in terms of how I'm using them, that's how I'm using them. So as you can see, I'm getting a good mix and match here throughout the week. On my easy run days, I'm able to slip this on, use it, and some longer runs, uh, longer interval work. And then when it comes to the shorter, sharper workouts, I get to use this. And combined, they're absolutely fantastic. So overall guys, which one would I recommend for you to get? Which one is the shoe that is gonna get you the most bang for your buck? Well the question I guess I have to ask you guys is what do you want a shoe for? Ultimately, if you're looking for just one shoe fits all that just does everything and you're gonna get comfort and you're gonna get speed and you're gonna get everything, then actually I'd be inclined to lean towards the Propel because it's gonna do better on your long run days and if you want something to do everything, um, this is going to be the shoe, it's going to last you longer. I'm noticing a bit of wear and tear on this thing already and I haven't even put 50 miles in it and that's just down to the exposed EVA midsole. That's also down to the fact that I am running on buffed out trails but I am going over stones, they're snagging the underside of the shoe. Um, so if you want a good all round shoe that's going to do everything then I would lean towards this shoe. It's going to give you more bang for your buck. However if you're in the market for a short, sharp, fast type of racing shoe, look no further than this thing. It honestly is a dream to run in. Um, I'm having such good fun with it and I'm really actually contemplating grabbing another pair because I know that they're gonna wear out pretty quickly and I'm enjoying it that much that I want to keep running in it. So I know that the chances of me getting 300 miles out of this thing is probably gonna be slim to none and I appreciate that that's the way running shoes are going. To make them lighter, they have to uh, sort of reduce certain elements of the shoe and in this case, the outsole rubber is a big detriment to the duration and the longevity you're gonna get out of it. But all in all, for me, I'm not worried. At the price of 105 pounds, I know it's quite pricey, but it's certainly not that premium top end price that you pay for some shoes. And over the Nike Zoom Fly 3, I'll pick this thing any day. So it really does depend on what you want it for. As I said, all round shoe that can do everything, propel. Something that's short, sharp, snappy, maybe used for racing, the Rincon. 
So that's it guys, that's my comparison between the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon, maybe it's the wrong shoe then, and the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it gives you some insight into the two different shoes. I'm absolutely loving them and of course I'd love to hear your views on them. If you're running in them, let me know in the comments below and let me know shoes that you would recommend to me to try. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here for weekly running content, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. And of course, I will see you next time. Until then.